We are back, and you wanna see something? Level four. What? Level four. Wait. Level four. 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 What? Everything is level four, and I also have new weapons. Uh, you see, uh, well, first things first. I have done a few side quests that apparently are unlocked that I had forgotten about. Uh, number one, uh, important. Uh, remember the fucking girl who was murdered but wasn't murdered in Facade? Uh, who just showed up when everyone thought she was dead? Yeah. Turns out she was a shade. Oh. Uh, she was hanging around in the desert and, uh, and everyone was like, why are you hanging around in the desert? And she was like, I'm watching the wolves. And then she was like, I'm watching the shades. And then she was like, I'm watching people. And then she turned into a shade and we fought her. The king showed up and joined, fighting. That was neat. Um, then there was a bunch of grave robbers going into the Baron Temple, the one where we uh, first rescued the king. Uh, so we fought them, and then the king was like, hey, there's also a bunch of shades in there, could you kill them as well? And we did. Uh, and we uh, got a weapon for that, which was the last in the Labyrinth series of weapons, this one, Labyrinth's Shout. Yeah. Uh, then I have also done the book, you know, the one where you go become old man and you fight as old man. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't very fun, <laughs> but the music was nice. Uh, it's very easy to forget you're playing as old man. Uh, it's really not any different from playing as young man. Uh, but the music is neat. There's a couple of arenas that do some interesting things, like uh, you do like a shooting gallery in facade on the uh, sand taxi thingy, you know? You just glide around and shades show up and just stand around and you shoot them with your pew pew pew. Hmm. And we got, for those three, uh, there are three separate um, combat arenas and they give you one weapon each, the Fools series of weapons, like this one. Hmm, that's a neat looking one. It's very, uh, I don't know, I haven't actually played World of Warcraft, but, it's f but it feels like a it World of Warcraft. It feels weapon. like it. Uh, and I have upgraded everything, it sucked. I spent like 10 hours in the desert fighting the same three shades over and over, hoping they would drop, drop their fucking bracelets. Uh, have you gotten the thing? Ah, yes, the thing. Hey, white moonflower, an extremely rare white moonflower, also known as a lunar tear. We just have it. We can eat it to restore all our HP. <laughs> I spent like fuck off. Stop kicking the table. My fucking giant uh, feet. Your fucking stupid teenage feet that you have no control over. Uh, I, I spent like two weeks <laughs> just planting flowers and crossbreeding flowers. Like I'm, I'm full on pink and peach and. I don't know why I'm not full of indigo, I think I ate some of them. Uh, I've also turned down the difficulty to normal again, because now I have all the drops. It's fucking... it's a big difference in how much you have to hit an enemy for it to die. Hmm. Anyways, for this episode, what I want to do is we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna read. Uh, we're gonna go one weapon at a time and read their weapon stories. As, uh, we have already read this one though, remember? Yeah, smash, my smash. Let's just get it on screen. Uh, from, 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 if you weren't there for that episode, read that. Pause and read that. Pause and read that. Pause and read that. And pause and read that. Rip, rip, rip. Help me, mommy. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. So, the lily leaf sword, though. I love him with all my heart, as he does me. When we cross paths outdoors, he sends signals with his eyes that only I can understand. He treasures my gifts so much, he keeps them locked away in a safe. Oh, I couldn't ask for a better lover. That sounds like a stalker. That sounds like the beginning of something horrible. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe this. My best friend deceived the love of my life and stole him from me. One moment he was there, and the next he was gone. All that remains are some of my gifts, which are scattered across his empty room. Everything else of value has been sold at the village marketplace. Yeah. Mm. Sucks. Uh, this will not stand. He hasn't abandoned me. He's just being tricked by that woman. I know he still has feelings for me. He must. 
I'm far more beautiful than she is, and he knows it. Oh yes, he knows. But I must make him see the truth, and quickly. I have to get her away from him. I have to kill her. Kill! Uh, hurry up and kill! Oh no. Psycho. Consumed by her madness, the woman slaughtered the young husband and wife, hacking them with such force that the blade of her sword warped. The woman that then went into hiding, leaving behind only, only clumps of unrecognizable meat and a sword with a horribly bent blade. But no matter how many smiths attempted to repair the sword, it never again retained its original shape. Yeah. You can understand it from the even from the beginning that something yeah. was terrible. That that's the general gist. Most of these go somewhere about ah fuck it. That's gonna happen a couple of times. Mm -hmm. The girl had uh, been bet betrothed. Fuck. I I, I, I haven't really spoken betrothed. today. I need to uh, betrothed. Uh, to a local lord on the day of her birth. As she grew, her days were taken up studying proper bridal technique, while her evenings were spent staring at her bedroom window and offering prayers for her betrothed to the night sky. Oh, my lord, if only you would come to me but one single day sooner. Her home was occupied by several other girls her age. Each one shared the same betrothed and spent her days studying bridal techniques and her evenings praying to the night sky. Oh, my lord, if only you would come to me but a single day sooner. Uh, one day a quarrel broke out as the girls argued that only the greatest among them could become their lord's betrothed. Uh, none would yield an inch, each asserting that only they alone could possibly satisfy him. Seeing this, uh, their ter caretaker uh, said in a kind voice, Worry not, girls! Each and every one of you shall surely become bride to our lord. Hearing this, every face lit up in an expression of pure joy. On the day they were to be married, the girls were brought to a place of cobbled stone they could see from the windows of their home. A single dagger was then placed before them, and the girls were told they needed to end their life here and now if they wished to meet their betrothed. Upon hearing this news, the girls scrambled to seize the dagger from one another, plunging it into their chest the moment they held it. Years later, a temple named the Betrothed was built on the spot where the girls took their own lives. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Also, the Nirvana dagger is is fucking huge. It's very large. Look at that. Th that looks it like really this. Looks like a but it's a two. It's, it's fu Holy shit, how can you lift that and stab your heart? Stab you in the chest with it? You're Precision. real strong. Precision. Uh, the Moonrise, which is now red. Oh. Uh, there is a legend of long ago that speaks of a nation threatened by a great inferno. This nation, however, was saved from eternal hellfire by a sword with the power to freeze anything. Around this sword stood thousands upon thousands of human eye sculptures. Of course it did. Of course. Uh, a man on a journey to seek out weapons eventually discovered the sword. He wrapped it in several layers of cloth and took it with him placing it in the bag he carried upon his back. But before the man realized what was happening, the cloth, the sword, and his own body ended up frozen solid. Uh, a traveling shrine maiden eventually discovered the sword. Uh, that, that's very Japanese, a shrine maiden. Mm. Uh, there, I don't know that... <laughs> and maybe in other Asiatic uh, countries, but I always see the, the Miko the ones with the red hakama and the uh, white top, mm. you know the ones. Mm -hmm. um, she offered a prayer to her god and gripped the hilt, The cold instantly shot through her fingers and into her body, freezing her solid. In her final moments, the shrine maiden unleashed words of great blasphemy to the god who had failed her. An enslaved woman in a mine eventually discovered the sword. Desiring an easy death over the continuation of her daily suffering, she grasped the weapons firmly. Uh, and while the woman did not freeze, she was also unable to pierce her own flesh. Soon the moonlight shone upon the blade of the weapon, reflecting the sight of the woman being beaten and dragged away by her master. Hmm. Uh, I don't really see the... Uh, I don't quite understand the story, but... It seems if you, don't, if you decide death, it doesn't give you death. If you do not decide death, it Perhaps. takes it away. Perhaps. Uh, the rebirth. Oh, well, we're that, that is totally <laughs> on a sword. 
That's that is very not a sword. That 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 looks like something fucking Voldo from Soul Calibur would swing around. Voldo. That's right. This here's the weapon that will be ending your life. Ah, uh, don't sweat it. There's nothing to worry about. It'll be a pain in the likes of which you've never felt before. Uh, in fact, you won't even feel pain at first. It'll be more like water sliding across your skin. Honestly, for most folks, it ain't the pain that makes them scream. It's the sight of their own blood flowing out of them. I don't know about that one. I think that mm-hmm. it's the pain for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it won't end so easy. See this part of the blade right here? This part hurts like a real son of a bitch. It's my favorite, which is why I always save it for last. I like to use it after people's voices get too hoarse and you can't tell what they're saying, which is a real, uh, Fucking hell, are you ever loud? Mind piping down here? Uh, you're gonna make my hand slip. I won't kill you right away, so don't worry about the thing there, champ. Uh, I'm gonna take my sweet time before you finally give up the ghost. Honestly, you'd be surprised how much it takes to kill a person. I mean, think about it. People got two eyes, most of them anyways, and two ears, ten fingers, ten toes, twenty nails across the lot. And don't even get me started on joints, cause folks got hundreds of the damn things. Yeah, we got plenty of ways to keep ourselves entertained. Huh? What, why am I doing this? Now ain't that a question. But I'm just doing what I, what you've been doing for a good long while now. Nabbing innocent citizens on fake charges, torturing them and putting their severed he- heads on display. That ring in the bells, buddy? It should, cause it was all you. Guess maybe you forgot about all that, huh? Well that's okay. I'll spend all the time it takes to make sure you remember every last thing you did to my wife and daughter. <laughs> oh, oh, what a twist. What a twist. The, uh, I mean, my mind immediately goes to Punisher, to Frank Castle. Yeah. If he was cheerful. Yeah. Uh, I believe this is the weapon we got from the king in Facade, uh, hmm. back in the first, first time we met him. Uh, Earthworm's Claw. This stupid thing. I mean, it's not this as stupid as the last one. It, most of the swords are pretty stupid. Yeah. That one, if you strike something, you will be stuck to. But, but the maybe. edge is like on the inside. Yeah, that would be maybe good if you are harvesting like wheat or hay or something. Yeah, yeah. Not, not in, in flesh, you'd be stuck with it. I mean, you know, there were scythes used as weapons, but what farmers usually would do when they needed to convert a scythe into a weapon mm. was that they would take the blade off and reattach it in a way so it's not pointed inwards. Yeah, pointing out like a spear or something like yeah, that. But like, I mean, maybe it could be good for hooking limbs. No, mm. you need a lot of strength to... Yeah. You need to actually get the whole thing past your opponent and then pull exactly. back. Which is like, if you're... I can just imagine just hooking that onto a big beast. You're gonna be dragged after it. Something or like you just that. lose the weapon. Maybe just use it as a giant meat hook for monsters. Yeah, but not as a weapon. Anyways, the story. An elderly scholar sits in the dim reference room of a moldy museum. Uh, before him lies a single box which has long been sealed away. It is an article the museum's previous curator made abundantly clear it should never be opened. It is said the box contains a fossil that drinks the blood of humans. What foolishness! One would think we, as a people, would have outgrown such nonsense. Only someone who spends all their life surrounded by books uh, could possibly believe such preposterous superstition. This feels like the beginning of a a Cthulhu story. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He opens the box, which spits forth a cloud of dust, and beholds a single stone of bizarre shape. Looking at the attached handle, one could easily conclude it was used in some manner of ceremony. However, it could also be viewed as a weapon. And what a fascinating shape. Yes, this will require rigorous research indeed. How foolish everyone was to be afraid of something like this. The scholar chuckles softly to himself as he reaches up and gouges out his left eye with a fossil's tip. Yeah, it's a cool. Yep. It's a cool tale. Yeah. Very much. Blade of Treasury. Uh, let's imagine. The, the, I, I don't, looks I'm, a little bit worn. From the hand. A little bit. I was gonna say it looks like a fucking He-Man sword. He-Man. I was actually about to say. Actually, that's just. I was just about to say. 
uh, for the honor of Grey School, what the fuck is this? Yeah. I actually went to a school with a guy who was obsessed with he man. He was he man huh. all the time. Really? Yeah. Which was kind of awkward in a way. Skeletor's better though. Mm. Yeah. By the power of Grey School, that's it. Yeah. For the honor, that's she ra Okay. Mm. Uh, so, uh, the sisters were puppets of complex machinery. So fine was their construction that any who laid eyes upon them assumed they were human in every way. Hey. They were the embodiment of man's greatest technological achievements. They walked like humans, ate like humans, laughed like humans. The one thing they could not do, however, was shed tears, for they were not designed in that way. Because the sisters were machines, they felt nothing. Oh, they might mourn as humans did, but they experienced no true sadness. They did not know what sadness was. Even when their friends perished in tragic accidents and their creator died of disease, uh, they felt nothing. To the sisters, all it meant was that those people no longer existed. Uh, it was a warm spring's day when a lone cat wandered into their home. It was a scrawny, filthy thing, riddled with, its, with disease. What a bother, the sisters thought as they looked down at the wretched creature. But they fed it. Uh, they fed it milk, uh, wiped it clean, and kept it warm, and as soon as the cat was well again, uh, and soon the cat was well again, goddamn, I can't read, uh, mm -hmm. from that day forth, it would linger wherever the sisters were, brushing against their legs when it wanted food. If it caught a mouse, it would bring it back to boast its prowess. If it wanted love, it would cry out to them in a mewling voice. What a bother, the sister thought. Uh, it was cold winter's day when the cat came into their house, let alone let out a feeble squeak and died. Time and again did the younger sister shake the cat's body. Time and again did the elder sister call out to it, but the cat neither moved nor responded. In that moment, the sisters felt as though they felt something break deep inside their chests. And from that day forth, they truly felt nothing at all. Hmm. You know? That might actually refer to uh, Devil and Popo. Yeah, could be. I feel like it might be. Because what is kind of implied, but never explicit in the game, um, and even more implied in Grim or Near, uh, is that um, this batch of replicants that we're part of mm. is not the first one. There have been more replicants. There have been several bruises woken up and aging and dying and several Jonas and several whatevers is there any desktop sound? yeah it's just very quiet it is the see that green thing down there on the OBS? Yeah, That's I see it, it. It's supposed to be more quiet than the voice. <laughs> so the Beast Bane, one of several beast weapons. Uh, long, long ago, in a faraway kingdom, there lived three brothers. The middle brother was a famous general who commanded a vast army. People everywhere were terrified of his troops, for they were most violent indeed. This general loved to make war. He enjoyed it nothing more than watching cities burn and corpses pile up and he fought not to subjugate, but simply to destroy all that he could. His well-trained soldiers laid waste to towns, cities, and even nations for the sake of their general. And as th uh, they hewed and hacked and shot, the general would chuckle to himself in the most vulgar of tones. Uh, the army marched on and on, nations by the sea, nations in the mountain, nations in the deserts, nations in the tundra, nations to the east, nations to the west, the general cared not. He simply wished to watch it all burn. His orders were absolute, and for years beyond counting, the soldiers killed and 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 killed. Thank you. After some time, the army arrived in a certain nation. They killed its soldiers. They killed its town people. They killed the princesses and princes and dukes and bakers and lawyers and accountants and beggars and thieves. Uh, eventually, a shabby general came pleading for his life with tears in his eyes, but they killed him as well. However, the soldiers thought he seemed familiar and tried to recall how they might have known him. In that moment, however, the general's daughter appeared, and they were became so engrossed in ending her life, they never thought about the matter 
again. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, fifth is the katana, which is now this pearlescent color. Mm -hmm. uh, there was once a famous poet in a land uh, to the far, far east. Now in his twilight years, his ability had withered uh, such that he could no longer craft a single stanza or verse. The poor poet spent every moment racked with sorrow for what had been lost. But one day a monk appeared by his side, gently placed a blade in his hand, and impaired the following words. Uh, kill one by the, this blade for one poem, and two for two in kind, the likes of which will be more splendid than any this world have ever heard. Clinging to the monk's words, the man waited for the cover of darkness and cut down a man he encountered by the roadside. The following day he wrote the most beautiful poem, instantly reclaiming the fame and prosperity he had lost. The poet went to kill two in succession. He killed one and wrote a poem and killed again and wrote another, rising to almost dazzling levels of wealth and renown. Uh, but soon he became obsessed with knowing how splendid a poem he might write if he were to kill someone precious to him. He killed his wife and wrote a poem. He killed his children and wrote a poem for each. He moved through his estate, killing everyone there, writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. Eventually he killed so many passers-by that the poems could not keep up. He would kill and write, then kill and kill and kill and kill, until in the end he took his own life, no longer crafting poems at all. All that remained was a blade wet with blood. That sounds like a very appropriate uh, Eastern folk tale or story, yeah. because most I have listened to certain stories from ancient Japan and whatnot, that is very accurate. I don't know, it might be something very like. It might be an actual folk tale. Yeah, I'm not heard uh, anything like it, but many of their school stories are like that at least because it's yeah. like, yeah, you're just doing stupid shit and you're a stupid, pe you're stupid people. The monk also makes me think of, again, something Lovecraftian, like this mysterious. It's, yeah, it's just a monk. Maybe, he just shows up, he gives you a sword. Yeah, maybe an East, like an Eastern uh, Lovecraftian. Yeah. It's neat, I like it. Uh, the Ancient Overlord, another weapon we got from the King of Sod. There once was a royal sword passed down in a prodigious kingdom that had prospered for generations. It was said that the crystal embedded upon it contained a great magic, and should it ever absorb the blood of ten thousand people, it would glow bright red and grant its wielder immortality. However, this kingdom's final ruler, known uh, to the world as the High King, valued the continued prosperity of the kingdom he had inherited from his ancestors over any prospect of eternal life. One day the queen, the king's dearest love, lost her life in a tragic accident. She was with child and the tragedy occurred shortly before the babe was to be born. Distraught with grief upon hearing the news, the aged king found himself unable to accept the prospect of his royal bloodline dying with him. In an attempt to continue the kingdom's legacy by attaining a body without death, the now mad high king used the sword to cut down any and all subordinates or citizens unlucky enough to cross his path. If I am to be the final king, he was heard to cry, then the kingdom survives as long as I live. He killed his subjects by the dozens, the hundreds, the thousands, and with each of the life he stole, the crystal's light grew more radiant. But when the crystal was nearly full, the king's ailing heart proved unable to bear the burden and burst, killing him on the spot. Alas, had he just slain the pregnant woman and unborn child that were before his eyes, he would have taken exactly 10,000 lives. So again, <laughs> there, there's, there's a theme, kind of. Yeah. Uh, the first of the phoenix weapons, the phoenix dagger. There once was a woman who promised her hand to a man who was departing for the front. Devout by nature, she spent mornings, afternoons, and evenings in prayer for the safety of her beloved. Perhaps in response to her earnest pleas, one night a bird enveloped in light appeared to her in a dream and began to speak. The man you love will surely return safely, said the bird in a beautiful voice. These words brought great comfort to the woman, and she began weeping tears of joy. However, continued the bird, his heart will surely not. Uh, 
Enjoy this rain, as ASMR. Hmm. Uh, soon, the man returned as the bird had foretold, his body covered in scars beyond counting. But as the bird had also foretold, he returned with an unfamiliar woman of extraordinary beauty at his side. Despite this, the pious woman would not, could not contain her love for the man and ran out to meet him as he approached. How much you want a bit? Uh, some, someone kills a bitch. Yeah. Surprised, the man embraced her, then collapsed to the ground. The pious woman stood over yeah. him, a bloody dagger in one hand, and the ripe crimson fruit of his heart in the other. His heart will stray no longer, she whispered. Amidst the gathering pool of blood, her face awash with pure ecstasy, she placed a tender kiss on her beloved's heart and offered a prayer of gratitude. Yeah. Uh, it is also implied that, like, these weapon stories are, you know, it's either the myth of the weapon or, like, the actual story of the weapon. Mm. Um, and that actual story, if it's a true story, it might be a story that happened in Drakengard land. Drakengardland. <laughs> what the fuck is it called? It's, it's Mid Midgard? I, uh, something. Uh, yeah, it's Midgard. Yeah. So this girl had a huge set of horns on her, beautiful horns, like a bull, just growing out of her head, above the ears. Uh, I had myself a gander at her, where the horns met the head, and let me tell you, they were coming straight out of her skull. Uh, she was the only kid like that in the whole village. The others were all, were all normal. The kid with the horns, though, born real small, apparently. Uh, the horns, I mean, not the kid. And hell, uh, they wouldn't need to be. Fat chance the kid's mama would have been able to push out a pair of horns huge like that. I kind of like that they switch up the style. Like you have both the like poetic writing and you have this like. So anyways, I'm a homer hammer. That's it. Uh, you think a girl like that would have been bullied, right? Well, you'd be wrong. That kid was the hardest person for miles in any direction. It wasn't a man in the village who tangled with her. And we're talking men that ain't scared of nothing. <laughs> she was the best at doing work that needed physical strength and all that, uh, and she always led the charge whenever shades tacked. Uh, and folks loved her for that, sure, but most of all, they loved her because she was always cheerful and just plain tough. So that's interesting that he mentions shades. That it puts this weapon uh, in, in this world. Yes, it does. Probably. Probably. Uh, but one day, this huge shade attacked the village and was just. Too strong. It tore the men apart like old rags, and half the guys in the village died. The girl with the horns fought with all she had, but eventually she couldn't keep up, and the shade lifted her off the ground and ripped the horns straight out of her head. The way she screamed was like nothing you ever heard. Sound shook the earth itself, it did. After that, things got real quiet, so I stepped outside and found both the shade and the girl dead. Each of them had wounds all over, and they were leaking blood out of just about everywhere. And don't judge me for saying this now, but it was almost beautiful. Like looking at dark red flowers in full bloom, you know? Hope that answers your first question about why folks in this village can't hear nothing. But you should know, none of us think badly of the girl for making us this way. Being deaf is a hell of a sight better than being dead. <laughs> anyway, they've all, we've all talked uh, over that day to death, and we think that final scream was her way of saying goodbye. Everyone in the village is honored that the last thing we ever heard was her farewell. And that's the God's honest truth. Yeehaw! If they are deaf, how the hell did he talk? Well, you can yeah, talk. But it, yeah. it's, it's difficult when you can't hear yourself. Yeah. That's why deaf people tend to speak, when they speak, tend to speak what we would consider in a somewhat odd way. Uh, the Fool's Embrace, and this is then one of the DLC stories, uh, the weapons. That is just... Yeah, no. Yeah, it's silly. That's like a giant scorpion tail that you just took. Yeah. Again, looks, I don't the head looks like a, a phoenix head with a, a plum and a, like a plume and then a fucking tail or something. Oh, you see like a dragon? Oh, yes, yes, wait! Wait, it is a dragon! Fucking... Wait, wait, wait. I see it now that you see Wait, it. is it Angel? It, it might actually be. Is it... Is it what? Holy shit, it is. 
It is. is. It super is. I it never is saw that. Thank you. <laughs> so do you just grab Angela's by the neck and you swing her around. And using the tail. Yeah. Fucking. Okay, okay, we can look at it like this. It is the same horns and everything. Same yeah, everything. It is the weird uh, horns. I never saw that. Huh. How interesting. Now I really want to know this sword story. I sure do. Uh, weapons, all. Uh, and we're down mm. to the Fulsome Fulsom base. Oh, the, don't mind the name of the next weapon. We're gonna look at that. Yeah. I didn't see. Uh, I was saved from the despair that shackled me. I was freed from the fate that cursed me. I was pacified from the indignation that plagued me. I was changed by the day I met you. My flames will scorch the earth below. My fangs will know the taste of blood. My claws will rend my enemies asunder. My wings will soar the skies above. If your eyes are to be robbed of their light, if your skin is to be stained with blood, if your sword is too heavy a burden, if your lips can no longer produce speech, ooh, ooh, this is even if this body is snuffed out, even if these words are stolen, until our contract is complete, until the moment this warmth is lost. That's Angela's 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Poetic so it was good to do that in this time. One, one at a time, please. Yep. So it was kind of good to have sword that it was Angela's on that sword before we left. That is that. good. You know, I just saw this fucking mess and I never equipped the weapon to swing it around, so I never looked at, at it very closely. Huh. So the iron pipe. Oh, and the way I got this weapon. Wait. Was by doing a quest for a woman in uh, the Force of Myth. She said, Hey, I have a fucking business idea. I'm gonna be a fortune teller, she said. And I was like, Okay. And then she said, I need this fucking magic bullshit stone. It's You can find it in the Lost Shrine. Go there and get it for me. And I was like, Fine. And I went there. Uh, or rather, she said, I need this bullshit stone, and then Popola said, it's in the shrine. So I went to the shrine, I brought it back to her, and then she was like, you want a fortune reading? And I was like, sure. And then we cut to black, and we, when we face back, we're in Tokyo. We're in the first level, the, f the first place in the whole game, uh, where we play as Gestalt near Gestalt Bruce, in the beginning. Remember? But he isn't in his Gestalt form, he's just a human. Yes. So he isn't a gestalt yet. Exactly. The thing from the beginning where we had a pipe. I went back to where Yona was hiding in that first cutscene and there was a box. And inside that box was this pipe. And then I fought some shades. And then we came back and, and Bruce and Vice was like, oh, what the fuck was that? And Vice was like, well, surely it can't have been a dream if we both experienced it. Uh, and then Bruce was like, uh, I guess. And then there was nothing more to that, so I decided not to show it. Hmm. So, let's read this story. May 21, uh, 21st. Uh, we finally run out of money. Food just costs a lot more now nowadays because of the war. We tried begging at the church, but they have their hands full caring for the wounded and can't spare anything. Jonas really lost a lot of weight. I wish I could get her something to eat. So this is 100% uh, original. Bruce. Hmm. It's human Bruce. Human Bruce. Uh, not... N not yet Gestalt. Or Replicant. No. Uh, July 15. We met a nice lady who gave us some food. At first, I thought uh, she was a homeless like us. A ho she was homeless like us. But she said uh, she was joining some kind of relief and support thing run by the government. So we decided to go with her. At least Yona seemed to be doing okay today. August 1. That nice lady from before uh, used a book and turned into a monster. We ran away as fast as we could, because I don't think she's human anymore. Everything those adults told us was a lie. They won't give us money, and they won't treat Jonas' illness. Also, there's a huge wall around the city now, and we can't get out. We never should have come here. Uh, on August 5, it's so cold today. I can't believe it's summer. I can't actually see my breath. We decided to hide from the monsters in an abandoned supermarket. We found a new, we found a few old cans of food here, but now those are gone. Also, Jonas' cough just won't quit. 
that are really bad feeling about this. So that is what leads up to the very first thing. Hmm. They're using uh, fucking August, July, May. They're using our calendar, which is interesting uh, mm -hmm. to me. But it was in 2014. Yes. No, 2048 or something. Yeah. But, but the near future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this, or like, some might say, the near future. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, had <most> of <laughs> I know. Uh, so, anyways, this whole—it's um, like a government relief thing. The government—they're like, "Hey, we're gonna help you." That was testing for Project Gestalt. Yeah, you did uh, mention uh, yeah. last time that it's like if you didn't have money, they used the poor to do experiments. Why do they always send the poor? Why do they always send the because poor? Because no one cares about the poor. Yeah. Uh, so what that book was, was a mass-produced version of Grimoire Noir. Uh, which is also what eventually Bruce picks up. And he's the only one who doesn't relapse. And that's why he's super important. And that's why the government agreed to put Yona on ice. Because they're like, we can't fix her now, but maybe in the future. And Gisaltnir is like, fine, okay. Until he gets fucking sick and tired 1400 years later. And I was <laughs> the Shadow Lord. And he's uh, like, fuck this shit, I'm tired. We're not reading Virtuous Contract uh, or Cruel Oath. Uh, these are Automata DLC weapons and they, they don't directly spoil Automata, but I don't want us to read that quite yet. Two-handed sword. Two-handed swords. Where I think there's more one handed swords than the other weapons combined. So, this is a Kusanagi. The shield left hanging on the wall was covered in dust. The blade left in its scabbard was rust had rusted over. The techniques I hadn't used were forgotten. The body I was to train in was left to grow soft. I had lost the will to practice discipline. I thought things would end without a single word said. I pretended not to see violence inflicted by others. I had given up. Assuming things would never change. Uh, I believe there was no way to oppose such a great power. I sneered at hearts that tried to believe anyway. Uh, I laughed, thinking them brainless fools. Those were the thoughts I had taken refuge in. I had given up, believing nothing was possible in the end. I lamented the foolishness and ugliness of it all. My life had lost all meaning. Are you worried about something you keep looking over at OBS? No, I'm just checking uh, the sound because it peaks kind of easily. Yeah, well. Even my voice is in the yellow. Yeah, well, that red doesn't really mean that it's total shit. It can mean that, but but don't worry too much about it. Uh, I had lost sight of those who were precious to me. I could not believe in their kindness. I was unable to save them from the grief that tore at their hearts. I had forgotten the courage it takes to protect the smallest of joys. I believe my words would never reach you. Very open-ended, very somber. Yeah, it sounds like someone who just given up completely. Yeah. Acts of beheading. I wonder if there will yeah. be beheading in this story. Yeah, it's a big dumb axe. It's a big dumb fantasy axe. You can stab people with it. <laughs> you can. Uh, there was once a ritual gathering of spirits, held on the night of the tenth full moon of the year. <coughs> During the ceremony, they would gather on the shores of a lake and boast to one another of all the evil deeds they had performed during the year. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking party. <laughs> There's the parties. Uh, the first spirit took great joy in telling of the unfathomably cruel ways he had killed, she had killed some of the finest soldiers in the land. Over the years she had transformed her shape into a lady of the night and called out to various men, then tore off every last piece of their body when they came to her bed. The soldiers, ashamed their skills could not save them, shed bitter tears as they died, and the spirit claimed they were the most delicious thing she had ever tasted. The next spirit regaled the others with a story of cunning and guile. One night she threw a small boy into a bog. Uh, when his older sister came to rescue him, she too sank into the murk. These two were followed by their parents, then other siblings, then extended relatives, until finally every member of the family was sleeping at the bottom of the bog. That 
sounds like a ridiculous train, but okay. Uh, when the spirit finished her so story, she was so beside herself with glee that she did not even notice the saliva that dripped down her chin. Nervously, the smallest spirit in the group stepped forward to address the crowd. I am the most amazing of all, cried the oft-ridiculed spirit at the top of her lungs, for it was I who thrust all living creatures into terror's deepest depths. De depths, fuck, difficult word. Uh, look, look at that consonant cluster at the end, P-T-H-S, just in a row, fucking English. Uh, the other spirits, unable to contain their mirth, collapsed to the ground and rolled about, and their laughter did not cease until the horrifying monster the small spirit had summoned from the demon world devoured each and every last of them. That's a weird story. I don't hate it, but it's a weird it's story. It's very weird. <laughs> I want to see this story. We've been together since we were born. We're together when we eat, then when we sleep, and when we dream. We share everything. We share the milk we get from mommy and the nice things Daddy says to us. But we're not together when we die. Daddy took me and cut off my head, and Mommy took my sister and cut off her head. But it's okay. Our blood got all mushed up into a big axe, and now we can be together forever. Well then. Mm. Um, Straight to the point, I guess. Yeah. Short and sweet. Not I believe... Sweet. I I think I've actually read the one from Drakengard for this one, mm -hmm. and it's like, it also has this theme of like, we're always together, and the last verse is like, we're always together, please, someone, please take us apart, oh god, and then it just ends. <laughs> the vile axe, which, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> why? I don't know. Uh, Very little for harvesting than for... It's not good for anything! Look at that piece of shit! <laughs> I know. It looks like the handle was just snapping too. Whenever you hit something. It looks very orky. Uh, the girl stares at the sight... Or... Um, the girl stares at the sight before her. Her father lies nearby, carved to pieces by countless blades. Her mother also lies dying, as well as her newborn baby brother. Uh, all that suffered terribly in their final moments, and the girl can do nothing but cry as she stares at the three soldiers who have murdered her only family. So, straight to the point. Mm -hmm. Years later, the girl reappears, her visage made strong by her vow for revenge. The first soldier has grown so fat that the buttons on his uniform can barely contain his girth. Uh, the girl approaches him and claims to know an easy way to lose weight. On the pretext of an exp examination, he has him lie down on a bed before suddenly hiking off his arms and legs with an axe. The remaining lump of soldier screams and attempts to wriggle away, but the girl pins him down and tells him he still has parts he can lose. Sometime later, the girl sits in front of the now rounded torso and smiles. There we are, she whispers. Look at how nice and slim you are. Uh, the second soldier is a peerless... Lothario? What the fuck is that? I guess it's like a... Lucario. He's a peerless Lucario. Each it's night a new woman is invited to his manor to spend the night. Meaning. Uh, it, it, a man who behaves selfishly and re responsibly in his sexual relationships with women. That's very specific. That's very specific. <laughs> but it works. Uh, so each night a new woman is invited to his manor to spend the night. The girl breaks into his home and kills the women at his side. He uses her axe to hack off his manhood as he trembles and begs for mercy. Oh, perfect. Nice. Aim for the manhood. It, it, it's, it hits hard. Mm -hmm. uh, the third soldier has long since left the service and is now living a quiet life with his family in a remote village. Oh, I know where this is going. Yep. Uh, after they've fallen asleep, the girl takes her axe and cleaves the support beams of the house, causing it to collapse. She then sets fire to the wreckage, creating a great bonfire that she can see that can be seen for miles in all directions. Suddenly, the soldier's son crawls from the wreckage, covered from head to toe in terrible burns. As his eyes fall on the girl who has murdered his family, she hands him her axe and flees into the dark of night, never to be seen again. So the cycle begins anew. Revenge begets revenge begets get fucked. 
So be slow. Long, long ago, in a faraway kingdom, there were three brothers. Remember? Mm-hmm. That actually ties together with the other beast brothers. That's cool. Uh, the eldest brother was a king who ruled over the nation entire. He was a most terrifying king, feared by all. They're not good brothers. No doubt. Uh, each day, the king would select one of his subjects to execute as a sacrifice. This day, he chopped off a mother's head and forced her family to watch. The head spun three times as it flew through the air before landing next to the head of her son, who the king has previously killed. Oh, the horror of it all! But the king merely watched the sight unfold before him and laughed in a most unsettling voice. Uh, one day, the king contracted an illness most dire, one which caused his body to rot while he was still alive. Uh, but though deceased, the king would still drag his decaying flesh to <coughs> executions. Oh, Bless you. Thank you. Uh, uh, the king would still drag his decaying flesh to the executions all the same. His retainers dared not defy their king, so they continued to kill day after day after day after day. I, I feel like that's a Japanese. That, that's something the Japanese writers like a lot to repeat something a few times too many to co make it feel unsettling. Yeah. Uh, not that Western writers don't do that ever, but it feels more common in Japanese media. Mm -hmm. In the end, the king rotted and died. Uh, his was a disgusting, foul, rotten death. But his retainers continued carrying out executions before the king's rotted corpse every day. Every day killing. Every day the rotted king and the rotted retainers and the rotted citizens and the rotted you. Hey, hey, hey. do you see that hand coming out of the screen pointing at you? Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> the Iron Will. Uh, this one I think I've read before, or at least one translation of it. Uh, I raised the cry of my birth, the sound of heated iron taking shape, a steel mallet striking my form, born to deliver karmic justice. I enter the world under careful watch of spark and flame that give light to the gloom. I am a blade born of a deafening roar. I am a weapon. I am iron will. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Um, I grant death. I transform the dread and screams of my foes to elation. I festoon my iron skin with their viscera. When I rob them of life, I am filled with dark joy. When I crush them beneath me, I find meaning in my birth. And I continue to kill, and I might share this delight with all. I kill and kill and kill and kill. I am a weapon. I am iron will. Okay. Uh, I am shattered. Uh, at battle and blood's end, my body is torn asunder by malice and hate. Today I again engage the red dragon in battle, and magical forces meet the leaping iron fangs to create a bloodstorm. My steel curse, I sink into the slumbering black. I am a weapon. I am iron will. So not only... Iron. <laughs> yeah. So not only uh, uh, fucking a reference to red dragon, but also the fact that it was broken when we got it. Mm -hmm. I dream. It is the dream of a small butterfly. In it, the butterfly is caught in a light rain, struggling against it with all its might. In the darkest of nights, I behold a dream that will never come true. I am a weapon. I am iron will. Bang, 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 bang. It, it does sound like either a poem or trying to make a song, really. By the, they are repeating mm. at the mm. end. It's kind of like a poetry done. Perhaps. The Phoenix Sword. Uh, this is a story of a time long, long ago. Da, 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 da. Uh, there was once a beautiful bird with resplendent feathers that uh, lived a quiet life deep within the forest. Uh, one day, a lost child wandered into the woods. He came from a place of famine and had been abandoned in the forest as a way to reduce the number of mouths to feed. And yeah, that happens, that sucks. Yeah, it happens. Uh, taking pity on the feeble, starving child, the beautiful bird plucked one of its own feathers and gave it to him. When he returned home, his family was overjoyed by the feather uh, and permitted him to live with them once more. Uh, do you want to go back? If, if you're put in the woods to die... Well, and you... Do, uh, mm. But you're a child. Yeah. Nonetheless, so you want to go back to what you are mm. used to. 
So anyways, hearing the child's story, one person after another descended uh, on the forest to tell the beautiful bird how poor and unfortunate they were. Each time the bird would pluck a feather and give it away. Uh, pluck a feather and give it away until it had no more to give and its once beautiful visage had become shabby beyond recognition. But the shabby bird had no regrets. One day the original child appeared before the shabby bird, which was featherless and freezing in the cold. He had come seeking a bird with resplendent feathers, that he might repay the creature's earlier kindness. Overjoyed, the shabby bird said to the child, It is I you seek. If I might beg a favor, would you hold me to your chest and warm my freezing body? Sparing a single glance at the shabby bird, the child called it a liar and cut it down with a large blade. He then roasted the bird, ate every last part, and set out anew to find the beautiful bird who had once saved his life. Uh, the moral of the story, don't be nice to kids. Yeah, they're, sh they're shits. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. most kids are shitheads. It really depends on their age. I suppose. So here's another labyrinth weapon. How do you cut with that, Eva? I don't know. I mean, you don't stab, just... You need to sharpen your slash. monster hunter hammer. The... <laughs> So, it was a beast that lived in a cavern's deepest, most untouched depths. Uh, fuck that word! I hate the word depths! All depths. my homies hate depths. Depths. Uh, it had massive horns, a body like steel, breath of scorching fire. The Minotaur? Mm -hmm. It sounds like it. Mm. Uh, the peace-loving villagers hated this monstrous beast with the head of a bull and the body of a human. Yep, yep. Yep. Uh, they feared it, and soon the beast came to be known as the Minotaur of the Labyrinth. Very, very explicit. Yep. Why Con didn't this? Yep. Contrary to its terrifying appearance, the Minotaur was exceptionally kind. That's not exactly like the original no, story. No, not really. Uh, not only did it refrain from harming other creatures, it took great care not to trample flowers beneath its oafish feet as it walked. Indeed, the reason it lived so deep inside a cavern was to help avoid frightening the villagers. What is this, Minotaur Ferdinand? Yeah, I like Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Uh, I like the Minotaur. Combine them, fusion dance. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one day, a lost girl wandered into the beast's cavern. Frightened by the sight of it, she cried so hard she eventually passed out, which left the beast in quite the quandary. I have no choice, the beast finally decided. I must take the poor thing back to the village, for her mother and father will be terribly worried. Two days... He's going to be absolutely terrible. Yeah, he's going to be murdered by the village fox. Uh, two days after the girl vanished, uh, her panicked parents found her sleeping soundly in front of their home. On the ground, a short distance away, was the dead body of the Minotaur. It had been impaled by several swords. The blood scattered around it held an almost otherworldly quality. Yet there was no indication the beast had attacked the girl. In fact, it looked as though it had been trying to place as much distance between itself and her as possible, so as not to dirty her with its blood, almost as if it didn't want her to be afraid. And then, having curled up and made itself as small as possible, the monster died. It's not really a monster, then. It is the humans who are the real monsters. Dun dun dun. So the fools lament this one. Memoir, June 6, 2003, approximately 15 double o. A massive white human. Ooh! Ooh, are we getting. Oh! A massive white humanoid, initially called the Weapon, but since renamed the Giant, falls from the sky above Tokyo's Shinjuku Ward, inflicting tremendous damage. At the same time, a large red creature, henceforth, henceforth referred to as the Dragon, because this is a DLC weapon, uh, appears and en engages the Giant in combat. Though both the nature of its attacks and their utility remain unclear. As the self-defense force contemplates methods by which uh, they might attack the target, the government established a Bureau of Emergency Countermeasures. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned... Scarface! What? Yeah, Scarface. Uh, the, the pilot. Ah. Uh, June 12, 2003, approximately 16 below. Uh, I don't know how to read times. 1600 hours. Mm. Uh, the giant, which was locked in combat with the dragon, suddenly begins to collapse for reasons unknown. Wait, is this a full hour after? 
did Kaim and Angelus fight the giant queen beast for one hour? I um, mean, maybe they do in D and D logic because usually battles mm. are ten minutes long. Every ring is six seconds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, suddenly begins. Uh, uh, the, the giant suddenly begins to collapse for reasons unknown. Uh, the dragons are then shot down by the 6th Division, 303rd Squadron of the Air Self-Defense Force. No official record exists of who issued the order to attack the dragon. Uh, work has begun to retrieve the remains of both the giant and the dragon, but no official verification has ever been made regarding which organization <laughs> performed the retrieval. Um, the court, maybe? Court? No, no. Uh, December 2003, I'll tell you no, why no later. Uh, the first case of white chlorination syndrome is confirmed in Tokyo's Shinjuku ward. We know what that is now. Mm. Yep, Queen Beast bullshit. Yeah. Uh, July 2004, a year later, about. Was it July? No. December, yeah. June. So, yeah. Uh, like a year later. Uh, humans continue to turn violent due to white chlorination syndrome. The fighting grows increasingly intense in infected regions. With the cause of the disease still unclear, the infected are isolated, and violent riots are suppressed by force. Uh, main thoroughfares are sealed and rail transportation is halted, uh, later leading to all of Shinjuku being sealed off. And that's the wall. Uh, at this time, the prospect of asking the American military for non-official intervention is considered, but the government defers. Uh, meanwhile, research begins on meso particles obtained from the giant and the dragon, as well as on countermeasures for white chlorination syndrome. This research, research ultimately leads to the founding of Project Gestalt a decade later. So, uh, I don't know if I mentioned. Actually, I'm, let let me pull out. The, can can we look at this and see something I haven't seen? It look yeah. It looks like a dragon. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah, it, it's the head. It's the second form, second level. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Fuck, are all these weapons Angelus? Uh, or maybe it's third. Because this definitely has a dragon vibe yeah, to it. Yeah, that is that is second form Angelus. God damn, I'm fucking yeah. blind. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, that's the Angelus head, and that's the giant tail's tail. Look at there. Right, right there. God damn. I'm fucking blind. I never saw these. Then again, uh, I've only had these weapons for like 15 hours of game time. Uh, not even. Like 5 hours. Uh, I never had the DLC. So I never had those weapons in the original. Uh, fuck. Cool. Cool. Uh, we can actually read the Virtuous Treaty. Because uh, that one does not have automata spoilers. Uh, my family has decided I am to do, to be betrothed. We know how that went last time. Yeah. I cannot resist, for I am but a tool. Uh, the man who became my husband p possessed terribly cold eyes, but he too is a mere tool to be used so his family might prosper. This is very real. This is still going yeah. on. Uh, he treats me well in his own way. But I was still unable to properly respond to his kindness. One night he calls me to his chambers. Uh, still thinking him a kind man, I go to him willingly. As he greets me, I stare at the beautiful white katana he holds in his hand. And that's it. Hmm. The other uh, Automata DLC weapons have <coughs> kind of almost spoilers, I don't want to read them. Right. Spears, we're in the home stretch. Transients. They were terrified. They were a frighteningly diligent people. They would clear forests and hunt animals even when they had no need. They developed techniques to preserve food they were unable to eat and earn more money than could ever be spent. Yet there was not a single one among them who did not accept these practices, uh, for none knew of any other customs. Are we getting fucking social commentary? Okay. Uh, they were a frighteningly, frighteningly studious people. Their grasp of calculation and science exceeded any pretense of practicality, and they would repeatedly engage in spirited debates regarding predictions of the future. They invented an increasingly difficult language and created an infinite series of complex machines which they would immediately discard. <laughs> yeah, uh, but there was not a single one among them who looked back, for none knew of any other reason for, of any reason for concern. 
They were frighteningly obedient people. Oh boy, here we go. Mm -hmm. Without ever being told, they would greet the morning sun at the same time, in the same clothes, while toiling away in the same cramped rooms. Yet there was not a single one of them who complained, for none knew what else they should be doing. This well, I, people certainly complain. It sounds like almost 40k-ish, in a way, that you live you for mm -hmm. several generations around a weapon of a big ship. Yeah, yeah. Uh, having worked far too much, the people lost their forests and took to living atop the sand. Having grown far too intelligent, the people conversed in a language that no other peoples can comprehend. Having grown far too well behaved, the people were unable to defy the laws that would be established one after the other, and came uh, to live their lives enclosed by tens of thousands of rules. They are talking about facade. Yes. Yeah, because this is a facade weapon. This is mm -hmm. uh, this is like the final form of the spears they use. Yeah. <coughs> Spear of the Usurper. Uh, in a far-off land, there was a man who acted as a double for the nation's prince, performing duties in his stead as was required. One day, having finished his work, he returned to the prince's chamber to find the princess lying naked in his bed. As the double stood in place, dumbfounded, the man who shared his face sneered and invited him to join them. I think I've seen that manga. <laughs> I think I know about that shit. The double loved the prince's sister. And he felt that the princess, who admired him as her, her brother, loved him as well. Indeed, uh, she was the only thing that kept him going in an otherwise miserable job, for the prince was a most despicable man indeed. Eventually, it came to pass that a war was to be waged under the prince's command. The night before it was to begin, the prince took his double aside and promised him a night with his sister if he could bring him the head of the enemy general. And as the prince chuckled with delight, the double took up his spear and thrust it through the prince's gaping mouth. <laughs> Get fucked. Get fucked. Uh, the, war was, the war over, the prince made a queen of his sister, and would inflict wounds upon his own face and throat, an act <coughs> which would occur every time she called out to him, using her brother's name. Before long, the prince was found dead, his face burned and a spear thrust through his open mouth. The man's face, hideously burned, was the very picture of serenity. Uh, well, no. the usurper, so it, it checks out. Yeah. I, m I remember learning that word from Zelda. There's a character in one of the games called the usurper, and I had to look it up. Mm. The Devil Queen, which actually, that looks like a decent enough halberd. Yeah, that looks like a proper halberd, really. Yeah. Like the, the front blade thingy, mm. what do you call it, that? Whatever. Uh, it's like a bit lopsided, but it's mostly fine. Yeah. It still works. It still can strike from under, from the front, stab in the front, uh, on the top and stab in the back. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, this story takes place in a small country at around the same latitude as the northernmost member of a nation of city-states that are part of a region with a village that is attempting to establish a trade agreement with another village on a tiny island in the ocean south of a country that used to have an alliance with a republic next to a kingdom where a queen resided. What the fuck is this? Uh, you fucking lost me at the third line. Yeah. Wait, um, I need to read this. <laughs> yeah. <Are you> what? <laughs> Why? This story takes place in a small country at their own... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we can't keep going. We can't be stuck in this. Uh, uh, it was asked by the owner of a shop frequented by a wet nurse who looked after the child born of an adulterous relationship with the wife of the master of a foolish servant who fell in love with a beautiful queen who appears in the poems of a minstrel who was loved by the country's king's wife's little brother's cousin's big brother's son in law's foster child. <laughs> This shit pose. That, that's act, that's fucking space balls. That that's oh. fucking uh, lone star. First, I must tell you, I am your brother's, your father's brother's former roommate. So what does that make us? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, it's even more. Okay, let's go. 
Where does one store the throne that was supposed to be adorned with decorations crafted from the materials of the handle of the lid of a pot that is the same weight as tableware that is the same color as a weather vane on a neighboring house that can be seen from the peephole of a door in the reflection of a mirror with an ornamental frame decorated with silver carvings engraved with a fragment that was made when creating the whetstone used to polish this kitchen knife? What? You fucking lost me, dude. Oh, no, 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 the person who heard that question was the wife's, husband's, little sister's, big brother's, daughter's groom, uh, little brother's, nephew's, father's, mother's, husband's, bride's, niece's, father-in-law's, wife's, husband's, little sister's, big brother's, daughter's, groom's, little brother's, nephew's, father's, mother's, husband's, bride's, niece's, father-in-law's, wife's, husband's, little sister's, big brother's, Daughters, grooms, little brothers, nephews, fathers, mothers, husbands, brides, nieces, father in laws, wives, fathers, little sisters, big brothers, daughters, grooms, little brothers, nephews, fathers, nephews, fathers, mothers, husbands, brides, nieces, father in laws, wives, husbands, little sisters, big brothers, daughters, grooms, little brothers, nephews, fathers, and then it just stops. Fuck. <laughs> why? Why did you write this? Because, fuck you. Who wrote this and why? I love you. <laughs> because fuck you, I guess. Was it, uh, oh, what, oh, I lost those names. Nishimura, I think. Eiji Nishimura? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Whoever it was, fuck Sorry. you. <laughs> we know this one, then. Yes. Yeah, uh. Well, I don't know. We, we've used this for a little while. Uh, in the distant past of a land known as the Golden Isle, there exists a sword crafted from every kind of metal and precious gem in the land. So sharp was its edge that even the slightest cut would have uh, would leave an unsealed wound that eventually drained the viking, victim of both their blood and life. Fuck, I can't read anymore after that. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, in a strange turn of fate, the sword eventually ended up in the hands of a destitute woman who sold her body to get by. The sword was a lo as long as she was tall, uh, and she could not wield it effectively. So instead, slid it. She instead slid it between her sheets as a surprise for men who used her. The sword was so sharp they felt no pain when cut, and soon died without even knowing it was happening. The woman would then help herself to their coin, causing her own purse to swell. Uh, making use of her gains, sick gains, bro. Uh, <laughs> the woman dressed most beautifully. And had soon acquired, and soon had acquired every kind of metal and precious gem in the land. Damn! Uh, but was, it was not enough for her, so she decided to melt down the sword and obtain the gems obtained within. A desire made manifest by the sword's beauty. Thus decided, uh, the woman heaved the sword to her shoulders and made for the blacksmith. But on the way to the smith, the sheer weight of the sword caused the woman to lose her balance, and she fell from a bridge into the river below. So unshakable was the, woman, was the woman's greed that she could uh, not bring herself in re to relinquish her grip upon it. The woman's pale and bloodless corpse was found washed up on the riverside the following day. Don't be greedy. Don't get greedy now. Beast Curse, the last brother. Long, long ago, in a faraway kingdom, there lived three brothers. The youngest was a terrifically lazy lad who spent most of his days fast asleep. However, he was every bit as cheerful as he was lethargic, and so was beloved by all. Wait, that is an axe. Kind of, yes. More like an axe than a spear. Hmm. Yeah. While the nation was beset upon by, most, by a most contagious disease, the young son did naught but lace around the place, humming to himself all the while. But his cheerful music comforted the townspeople, so instead of hating him, they Com sang his praises. Not comforted, comf comforted. Ah. Is it comforted? Yeah. Com uh, uh, fuck. English. Comforted. Uh, oh, what a fine young man, they would say. Just the finest young man you will ever find. Not compared to his brothers. I su yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's not actively murdering anyone. Mm. When the nation became embroiled in war, the youngest son did not but lace about the place, telling stories of the good old days for a while. All the while. 
uh, but his, fa his fascinating stories helped the townspeople forget the horrors of war, so instead of hating him, they sang his praises. Oh, what an amazing young man, they would say. Just the most amazing young man you'll ever find. One day, the youngest son was lacing about the place as usual when he realized he could no longer hear the voices of townspeople, and he wondered why that may be. He laced and he wondered, he laced and he wondered, he laced and he wondered. Eventually, all that wondering tired him out, and he went to sleep. That is why, in that nation where all have perished from war and disease, the only sound that can be heard is the soft snoring of a young man. In a nation of happiness, a nation of happiness, a nation of happiness, a nation of happiness, a nation of happiness. So I guess that's like cross-referencing, because the king got sick and died after being a murderous cunt, and the general was murdered by, after being a murderous cunt. Anyways, the captain's holy spell. <coughs> holy spear. Holy spear. Oh, this is a short one. The captain tramples life's life under his feet. The screams of others transform into songs of joy. Flowing tears change from despair into darkness. Conflict beckons revenge and gives way to new solitude. It almost re reads like a haiku. Almost, or Dave just said, I don't know what to write here, so let's go with just short one. That's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dragoon. Dragoon lands. Dragon Dragoon. Uh, he had grown old. The king's dauntless gaze had lost its light, and his stalwart body had grown soft. What's more, every ounce of fear and vanity he had gained with age now gnawed away at his heart. The king was afraid, so he repeatedly ordered the invasion of neighboring countries. Uh, so as to hold on to the lands he had been sworn to protect. The king was afraid, so he tried to take everything through violence and oppression, for he no longer trusted his own advisers and vassals. You know what they say about power. There was a, there was a dragon that had sworn fealty to the king. Uh, this wingless creature uh, would do anything the king commanded, for he had been saved by the king once, and sworn to repay his debt, this debt with every with his very soul fuck uh, even if the king's orders were folly and madness the dragon would follow them to the last for his king was justice itself one day the dragon requested an audience with the king he was covered in blood from his latest victim the king's own son the regent had ordered the dragon to assassinate who, who sends a dragon to assassinate someone oh well uh, i guess this king does someone rad uh, the bloody dragon hung its head low and said, I cannot defy your orders, O king, but neither can I obey them any longer. I beg of you, kill me, and grant me release. This is a tale of a foolish king and a wingless dragon in a nation that fell centuries ago. Even now the wind blows ceaselessly across the grasslands. It blows just as it did on the day king and dragon made their pact. Hmm doesn't seem like it's directly referencing Kaim and Angelus, but mm -hmm. uh, the mention of a pact does sort of evoke it the image of Drakengard. It could be just a, another yeah. part of history of Drakengard, be. because it said a wingless dragon. Hmm. The Phoenix Spear, another Phoenix one. Phoenix Spear, the one we use the most right now. Uh, there was once a warrior in a frontier nation who feared not death. He was so brawny and powerful and swole, arrows were said to bounce harmlessly off his flesh. For this reason, the warrior always threw himself into the thick of any battle. One day, a beautiful bird appeared before the warrior in a dream. The bird commended the warrior for his valor in battle and offered to grant him one of two wishes. The bird could bring an end to war and grant peace to all the world. But the bird, or the bird, could bequeath the warrior an immortal body. The warrior chose immortality. From that day forth, the warrior's exploits were nothing short of astonishing. He mowed down foes in uncountable numbers. No amount of arrows or swords or axes could slow his march. The king showered him with titles and gifts, and for a time it seemed the warrior's days of stunning glory would continue until the end of time. But conflict did not cease. Eventually the warrior's frontier nation was invaded so often that the flames of war left the entire country in ruins, crops withered. People perish, and before long, there were none left who even knew the warrior's name. The shattered warrior was tortured day and night by an endless, by endless starvation, but his body refused to let him die. 
so he sought out the bird again and pleaded for it to grant him release. Oh, but you cannot die, chirped the bird in response. You will never die. That's why I never choose immortality because it doesn't Care go well. Careful what you were for also, because if you just might get it. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. if someone finds out that you're immortal and the immortality uh, is like you grow back anything you lose, uh, if like the mob finds out they're gonna capture you and harvest your organs. I mean, that's one place you could go with it. That's what I would do if I was. By the way, this weapon makes me think of uh, Diablos from uh, Monster Hunter. Yeah, he actually does. Uh, she was a hopelessly slow woman, impossibly clumsy. It would take her three times longer than anyone else to accomplish a task. She walked slowly, talked slowly, she even blinked slowly. So slow was the woman that she could not even draw water to anyone's satisfaction. The children began calling her the cow and laughing when she passed by, but she would only chuckle in response. She was a hopelessly dull woman. When she fell and drew blood, she would carry on as though in a daze. Though coins often dropped from her purse, she never managed to retrieve one. And if someone spoke ill of her to her face, it would take hours for her to realize the insult. Hey, hey why you gotta call me up like that? <laughs> um, when the children saw her, they would hurl rocks with glee. Shit kids. Shit kids. Get fucked. Shit kids. Uh, she was a hopelessly foolish woman. One summer, when the village was suffering the mo most terrible drought, the woman vanished. The children all starved to death. The villagers spent no time worrying about the woman ran away. Two days later, rain fell and the village was saved, but the woman did not return. And on the twentieth day, a shaman arrived at the village. The shaman held a spear with a pair of horns that was oiled and sticky to the touch. So heavy was the spear that none could wield it effectively. Although, even if they managed to lift it, the weapon was incapable of piercing through anything at all. The shaman forced it on the people and left it with them, but none dared approach it. And to this day, it quietly slumbers in a forgotten corner of the village. Fucking comes to your village, gives you a heavy ass spear that can't actually pierce anything, refuses to elaborate, leaves. Elaborate further. The only thing I can imagine that the woman went to shaman and sacrificed herself, but the only thing is the spear lift. Some, some, some such bullshit. Yeah, the fool. Fool's a cord. Interesting name, huh? <laughs> this is the story of a sorrowful prince, a tale of a kingdom in a time long past. Attacked by the forces of darkness, the nation was annihilated in a single night by inhuman soldiers with red eyes and a group of black dragons so numerous they blotted out the sky. Having infiltrated the king's castle, the black dragons visited upon the king and queen a most horrible fate. It is said that their stomachs were torn open by the black dragons' mighty claws, and the very floor they stood upon became a sea of blood. The prince and princess, uh, though racked with sorrow, escaped to live another day. The prince, spurred by the shock of witnessing his parents' tragic end, became consumed by a desire to exact vengeance. So that sounds a lot like uh, Kaiman and Furiai's backstory. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was about to say. Uh, this is the story of a terrifying prince, a history of a conflict in the long ago. Obsessed with ha laying low his hated enemies, the prince indulges in his vengeance day after day after day. Well, even when faced with foes who take heel, he chases them down and tears them apart from growing to gullet. The carnage is so horrific. His fellow soldiers whisper tales of how they saw him mutilating bodies that are already long dead. Perhaps because no commander can control him, the prince is sent to an even harsher battle. Oh, <laughs> is that what happened? Everyone is like, fuck, he kind of scary. Let's send him to die somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a story of a fooled prince. The whereabouts of fate in the long ago. Uh, the prince's next battleground is a castle that guards a goddess. He lays waste to all before him. Hacking arms, cleaning legs, rending stomachs, gouging eyes, separating heads from shoulders. But soon the injured prince can no longer tell the difference between the blood that rains down and that which comes from his own wounds, and he collapses in a heap. As he rises in pain, coughing up gouts of hot blood, he lifts his gaze and sees a hated dragon standing before him. This is the story of a mad prince, a meeting with a dragon in the long ago. An injured red dragon stands before the prince. And though it is a different color than the beast that killed his parents, he feels the need to avenge himself upon it regardless. 
but as he raises his sword, the dragon says, in exchange for both our souls, human, I will save your life and grant you power. After some thought, the prince makes a pact. It matters not to him that he, what he might lose in the deal, or that it involves a dragon. All he cares about is that he can continue swinging his blade. So he swings and swings and swings, and with each blow, his heart fills with a desire as black as the deepest night. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. our boy. That's, That's our, boy. our sociopath. Uh, there the is one. a manga that is sort of a pre. It sort of ties Dragon Guard three and one together because Dragon Guard three takes place before one. The manga has one of the characters from three with an original character who's a piece of shit, uh, and they also meet Kaim and they're like nearby when the dragon murders their parents. The manga isn't good. It's very much gore and horror for shock value and there's mm. completely needless, uh, purposeless rape in it, mm. uh, which, look, you can use rape in a story if your taste, well, of course you can use it. But you, it's very easy to do it very tastelessly, yeah. uh, whether you intend to or not. And I feel like that manga does it real bad, and I don't like it. <laughs> and uh, it's always with that you need to be careful. Yeah. So, anyways, that was the last weapon we're gonna read because that one is has automata spoilers. So that we're about as ready as we're ever gonna be to go to ending. B. Ha <laughs> ha! So, uh, look forward to that shit on the next one. Kruata.